Okay, so this is going to be kind of a really quick recap of lesson 4.1, which is equivalent rational expressions. Okay, so equivalent rational expressions. Okay, so there's two things we actually talk about in this section, right? We talk about equivalent rational expressions and non-permissible values, okay? So an equivalent rational expression is any expression that's been multiplied or divided in the numerator and the denominator. So for example, if I had a rational expression, like say 2x plus 1 over 2x plus Eight. Okay, so if I was looking for a equivalent rational expression, that's anything that's multiplied or divided by the top and the bottom. So for example, uh, let's do something nice and easy. We'll multiply everything by two. Okay, and the thing that's kind of important or a little bit tricky about this is that we have to remember that when we multiply something, it gets distributed to everything. Okay, everything inside the brackets. So it's not going to become 2x plus, or sorry, it's not going to become 4x plus 1. It's going to become 4x plus 2 on the top. Okay, so 4x plus 2 in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we get 4x plus 16. Okay, so that's the only part that's really tricky about it. Okay, so whatever we decide to multiply it by, in this case, we did 2. Okay, It has to get distributed to every term. Okay, The other thing we have to remember is that whatever we multiply in the numerator also has to be multiplied in the denominator. Okay, So that's one type of equivalent fraction, or sorry, equivalent rational expression. It's where we're making it bigger by multiplying. Okay, The opposite is also true. So we can also take something like, say, for example, uh, let's do... 4x squared plus 6x over 2x, okay? So we have a nice rational expression here, and we can also find another equivalent rational expression, but this time by dividing, okay? So let's mix it up. We can divide by even 2x, okay? We can throw variables into the mix. It doesn't change anything. And the same rule applies. Whatever we're dividing by, that has to divide the first term and the second term, okay? It has to go to everything that's involved, okay? We can't just leave out terms and not worry about them. Okay, so 4x squared divided by 2x gives me 2x, right? One of those x's is left over. 6x divided by 2x gives me just 3, okay? And then the denominator, I have 2x divided by 2x gives me 1, Right? So if I even simplified this, I could say an equivalent rational expression would be 2x plus 3, or 2x plus 3 over 1. Okay? So that's all there really is to rational exp or equivalent rational expressions. One thing that we have to be careful of, or really I guess just keep in mind, is that there is an infinite number of solutions when we're talking about equivalent rational expressions. Equivalent, sorry, number. Equivalent, no, oh, number, uh. Equivalent number of equivalent expressions, right? Because we could multiply something by... 2, we could multiply something by 3, we could multiply it by pi, we could multiply it by 10,000, right? So on a test, if I'm asking you to show me an equivalent rational expression, I could have every single student in the class give me a different answer and I'll have right answers. Okay? The other thing we are kind of talking about in this little section 4.1 is NPVs, right? Non-permissible values. Okay. And 
Non-permissible values just basically means something that x cannot equal. Okay, so say for example I'm looking at something like 4x over x minus 2. Okay, when I'm looking for my non-permissible value, I am not going to worry at all, for now at least, about the numerator. Okay, I don't care about it right now. All I'm looking for is non-permissible values, so all I want to look at is that denominator. Okay, so the first thing we always want to do is we want to factor it. Okay, in our example here, we don't have anything to factor, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, we'll do another example, though, where we do have to factor the bottom. Okay, step two is find what those NPVs are. Okay, so when I'm looking for my NPV, what I want to think about is I know that the denominator can never equal zero. Okay, because when we're dealing with fractions, we can't divide by zero, right? We can never have 4x over zero. If you put that in your calculator, you won't even get an answer. Okay, it's not allowed. So we're basically just trying to find when does that happen. So if I know that, okay, x minus 2 can never ever, under any circumstances, ever ever equal zero, what can x not equal? Okay, so this one's nice and straightforward, so you might be able to just guess the answer, but when we're looking at more complicated ones, what I want you to do is I want you to start by writing it like this, and then work to isolate x, so get x all alone. Okay, so once we've done that, we can look at this and we say, okay, well, if I add 2 to both sides, right, these will cancel out, and then I'll get something like x cannot equal positive 2. Okay, so this is my non-permissible value. X can equal anything in the world except positive 2. Okay, we'll do one more example that's a little bit more complicated. Okay, so let's do for example uh, negative 20 over x squared minus 3x. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, like I said before, when we're talking about just non-permissible values, I don't really care what's going on in the numerator, okay, for the time being. Eventually, we'll have to deal with the numerator, but for now, we're not going to worry about it, okay? I do know my first step, though, is to factor, okay? So I need to factor this guy right here. So I'm going to look at it, and I need to find, okay, first thing I always want to look for, I know, is my GCF. Okay, well, x squared minus 3x, oh, GCF is equal to x. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to rewrite this in factored form. So I'm going to go negative 20, which I don't really care about right now, right? But I know when I write it in factored form, if I take that GCF out, I have x x multiplied by x minus 3. Okay, When you have something that's been factored on the bottom, so the first example we did wasn't factorable, but when we have a case like this where it is factorable, we always have to remember, okay, I have to deal with anywhere where there's an x, I'm going to have an NPV. So we have two x's, so we're going to get two non-permissible values. Okay, Let's deal with the first one here, right? So we have, okay, x, right, we just make our factor. We know our factor can never, ever, ever equal 0. Okay? Oh, x can't equal 0. Right? Nice and easy. That's half of it there. We've got one out of two marks so far. Okay? The other bit, though, okay, I say, okay, x minus 3, that's the other factor, and that also can never, ever, ever equal 0. Okay? So, like I said before, I'm going to work to isolate x, so I want these to cancel out, and then I'm going to look at this and say, okay, sweet, that gives me x cannot equal 3. Perfect. Okay, let's do one more example. We're going to make it a tough one, okay? So, if we look at something like, say, uh, we'll go... Let's go positive 6x on the top, since it doesn't really matter what's on the top. And I'm going to go 2x minus 5 on the bottom. 
Okay? Same rules as always. I don't care what's going on in the top right now. We'll deal with that later in the unit. For this part, don't care. Okay? I look at my bottom. Is 2x minus 5 factorable? I say, okay, nothing divides 2 and 5, so nope, it's not factorable. So I'm going to go straight into finding my NPV. Okay, so same way as always, 2x minus 5, under no step circumstances, ever, ever, ever can equal 0. Okay, so we always do the same thing, though. This one's a little bit more complicated, but we know, okay, let's get our x alone. So if I have a minus 5, I'm going to add 5, just like I did before. Okay, and then I say, okay, well, that leaves me with 2x cannot equal positive 5. Okay, that's a good start, but our x isn't isolated yet. We still can get rid of things. Okay, so we have 2 multiplied by x. So I'm going to go 2 divided by 2 there, right? And that's say, okay, these cancel out. 5 divided by 2, we can't really simplify that, right? So I just know x cannot equal 5 divided by 2. Okay, x can be anything in the world except for 5 divided by 2. Okay, and that is 4.1.